Oh, you serious? Bumble Clinton. What? Said I heard a beeping sound that would suggest the light went, but I didn't see anything go off. And the light's not on. All right, all right, cool, cool. to rotate my phone. Hi to everyone who's uh, joining in right now. Um, just waiting for probably another minute or so before I start the live. Um, or start when well, it started, right? Uh, just in for about another minute before I start uh, getting into the content that I want to share or that I will be sharing with you this evening. So to the 20 plus of you who are here already, <laughs> um, thank you for logging on. Please stick and stay. Um, just about to discuss um, podcasting. What you can do also is just share with your friends, your family who are online somewhere uh, that uh, we're about to start. Hi, Gracie Brown. How are you? This evening, I'll just be lecturing, um, having a little issue with slides um, and another software you would use to broadcast but um, you know you can roll with the punches <laughs> Also, I, hey, Camille from Connecticut. Happy to have you, Camille. I uh, hope you're staying safe um, during this, this pandemic and then with all the other things going on in the United States um, the various protests and riots and so on around uh, seeking justice for George Floyd, who was uh, murdered last week and laid to rest today. So please stay safe. Alexandra Walker from Switzerland. Yes. Hello to you. Happy to have you. Uh, to everyone who's joining from uh, various places all around the world. Gracie in Louisville, Kentucky. All right. Okay, Derek, if you want to get it going, um, sure, no problem. All right. Um, first and foremost, a big welcome to everyone, uh, wherever you're tuned in from. We're so happy to have you. Got to say thanks to uh, Jamaicans.com uh, for the opportunity to use this platform to, to share this evening or this, uh, this, yeah, this evening um, about um, podcasting, right? Um, it's becoming increasingly popular. Um, and a great way to build communities, share messages, um, and share information, really, uh, wherever you are. So thanks a lot, uh, Jamaicans.com, for the opportunity. Also, I've got to say thanks to Casey Gardner uh, and the Storyteller Company, um, who are always supporting Jamaican creatives, of, of which I'm numbered among them. Um, so thanks for the opportunity. The creative industry, of course, is being touted as a critical and viable sector for economic growth and development, not only in Jamaica, but all across the world. Um, the in Internet is a glorious platform which provides an opportunity for you to literally reach the world from your neck of the woods. So you're no longer able to necessarily fly all over, but you can definitely get your message, your products, your services uh, sold um, and offered. Um, wherever you are. Um, now, of course, the Storyteller Group also, and with Casey Gardner, has the Love Not Likes Network, um, and they're launching online-based short courses, and I'm doing one of them, actually, called Podcasting 101. Um, and these short courses are where individuals can sign up 
um, for, for membership and learn the basics of live blogging, pitching to brands for sponsorship, personal branding, taking great photos, and, well, of course, how to start your own podcast. So we're very happy to have that. Um, Casey also has written a book called Creatives of the Future. It's an ebook. book um, You can get it, on, get it on Amazon or Gumroad for only seven U.S. dollars, right? So check that out. It's a basic outline of how to market yourself as a creative. Um, and also, the Storyteller Network, uh, Storyteller and Love Not Nights Network offers photo and website and branding packages so you can get going digitally, all right? So, again, thank you uh, for tuning in, and let's get into it. So, what is a podcast? You've probably heard of podcasts before, right? Well, simply put, a podcast is just a digital audio file that's available for download via the internet. Again, as simple as it is, a digital audio file that's available for download uh, via the internet. And it's usually not just a singular file or a single file. It is a series, and a series of episodes, right? Um, so you won't get to share everything about one particular topic in one podcast or in one message. So you do a series. So you can break it down and have conversations and share more information with people and help people to deep dive into into different things, right? Um, podcasts have grown, though, with the advent of multimedia devices to not just being only audio files, you also have video podcasts which you can download. What a lot of people do um, now with their audio podcasts is that they're in a studio and they will also record the video, record the, the them having the conversation, sharing the information, and then they will also post that video. A lot of people do it on YouTube, so you can find lots of podcasts uh, on YouTube dealing with various topics. But I want to make my conversation with you this evening very simple, very straightforward, right? Um, a good podcast is all about content, intent, your equipment, and your deployment. Let me say it again. Four simple things for you to always consider with podcasts, right? The content, your intent, your, your equipment, and your deployment. So let's start with content, right? Um, it is always good for you to have good content. If you don't have good content, people aren't going to pay attention to it. You won't be reaching people that you need to reach, right? Um, content, oh, my light keeps going off. <laughs> One of my lights. In my, this is my home office um, and retrofitted to be a studio from time to time, right? Um, but my content is all about what you are sharing with people. But the content, you, what you want to do with your content is to ensure that it is very, very specific. Because lots of people have done lots of research, published books, done videos, done other podcasts as well about a wide variety of topics, right? But you, what you really want to do is to zero in on something. Right? So you want to essentially create a niche. Uh, let's use something easy, uh, something popular, for example, like hair. Right? If you're thinking about doing a podcast about hair, you have an interest in hair, you're a hairdresser. You now don't, are not able to go into your, your, your salon and have people come in because COVID is restricting the way that well, laws around protecting people from COVID-19 are preventing people from or restricting the movement of people. But you still want to <clears throat> ensure that you can still uh, share information about hair. It can't just be hair. Narrow it down. What type of hair? Are you talking about kinky hair, hair with coils? Um, are you talking about straight hair? Are you talking about natural hair? Are you talking about extensions, wigs? Are you talking about uh, processed hair? Are you talking about how to process hair? You need, when you're thinking of the content of your website, uh, not your website, pardon me, your podcast, to narrow it down. So, for example, someone in Jamaica may want to do a podcast about caring for natural, unprocessed hair in a temperate climate or in a tropical climate. Now, that is very specific because what you're doing now, you're saying, hey, listen, this podcast is targeting the specific people who, one, have natural unprocessed hair, two, right, are living in a tropical climate, 
right? You really want to zero in and zone in so that you can share that kind of information. Now remember, your podcast does not have to go on forever. It may not necessarily be something that runs for years. It could be that you're interested in here, but you're doing a podcast, let's say 20 episodes, which deal specifically with natural, unprocessed hair in a tropical climate, or how to treat and care for natural, unprocessed hair in a tropical climate. You've got to be very, very specific with your with your content, right? So that people know exactly what they're listening for. So when they tune in, they know exactly what they're listening for. Now, one of the other things I want to mention, I did mention intent, right? And beyond the four things I, I started off with, I would want to expand a little more beyond that, right? There are a couple other points, but those are the four main things. Your intent. What is the point of your podcast? Are you intending on building a community? Are you intending on changing views? Are you intending on getting a product sold? Are you intending on getting a service sold? What are you doing? You must know what you're doing. If you don't have a goal in mind, then your podcast, almost like when, when I'm starting to ramble, will just go on and on. You have to ensure that you've got a very specific goal in addition to that very specific content uh, that you are, are, um, are seeking to share. So keep those things in mind as well. The next bit is around your equipment. Equipment is very important, right? Because truth is this, if you don't have the right equipment and not necessarily the most expensive, just the right equipment, then you are putting your podcast at risk. You could have the best content in the world with the most noble intentions uh, or, or savviest business intentions, but if you don't have the proper equipment to get your recording done, then you are going to find yourself in trouble because no one will be able to really hear you properly, which is part of the reason why, for example, hi, Carrie Ann Jordanson from Australia, which is part of the reason why I'm using using a microphone, right, a condenser microphone this evening, rather than the speaker uh, or the microphone, the native microphone in, in my cell phone, right? Um, there's a reason for that, because I know that talking to you or sharing with you through this condenser microphone, which by the way, costs just around mm, about 30, 20 to 30 US in that, in that ballpark, right? So it's not causing you to break the bank, right? Um, you can get this microphone and I know that speaking through it will give you a better listening experience than if I were to use the native microphone in my office, uh, on my phone, pardon me, in my home office, which sometimes can sound a little bit hollow, a little bit shrill. You won't get the benefit of hearing me uh, properly, right? So do a little bit of research. You want to look for microphones that are well one condenser microphones particularly if you're going to be recording uh, from your laptop or if you're recording uh, from your cell phone if you have mobile devices handheld devices that you're using uh, to do your recording right you will want to get a proper microphone that you can get the best quality sound possible of course Ideally, you'd really want to use a professional recording studio for your podcast. If you have that luxury, then that's great, right? Because what it means is that you will be able uh, to get the absolute silence of a studio, right? You're able to get a proper recording uh, of your content, and you may also be able to have access to a producer or an engineer who can help you to correct and properly tune your sound so you get the best sound possible, right? And that is one of the things that you have to consider with your podcast. But if you are not able, especially if it's not funded or you don't have the wherewithal in terms of money, you're just operating literally uh, from home, then you don't have to break the bank either, right? Um, if I were to kind of pan around uh, my office, I've got a little LED light there uh, that I bought uh, bought online for probably around, I think I spent about 30 US for that, right? I've got another light 
uh, in front of me here, <laughs> right? Um, and they really help because I do a lot of video recordings, right? I, I make cooking videos and stuff like that. So um, you really want to, hello, Janice Williams uh, from Massachusetts, Janice Williams Smith. Yeah, you want to not have to break the bank, uh, but you can still get quality equipment uh, for a low price um, that will help you to, to deliver your content in a way that people are able to appreciate. And the truth is, the content, the, the equipment list is really not long when you're working from home, right? If you've got your phone, your mobile device, your laptop that you're recording to, right? You're going to need, obviously, to have space. But you will also need to have a, a bit of editing software so that just in case uh, you made an error or you had to stop during the middle of your podcast uh, to, to, um, to do something, to whatever it is, you had some interruption, you'll want to be able to edit out those errors uh, and then share with your viewers the unblemished, so to speak, uh, content, right? So make sure that you've got the right equipment. Uh, and I'm just trying to reset my, uh, put back my, my tripod in the right place, right? Um, buy tripods, invest in a tripod, particularly if you are going to be doing uh, a bit of, uh, of video. And pardon me for looking away from the screen. I'm just directing someone here to, to, to tune, into this, tune into this podcast. So again, you've got your your equipment, you will need a sensible microphone, get yourself a condenser microphone, right? Um, and then, and just look up, look up those things online. You can find them on eBay, on Amazon, on uh, Shopify, a number of online e-commerce platforms carry electronic equipment. Um, you will, you can find them there, right? Um, if you've got a good mobile device, really great. That works perfectly fine for you. Um, you will also need some kind of editing software, audio editing software. Personally, I'm a bit of an Adobe fan, so I use Adobe Audition um, when I'm editing uh, my audio files. Um, but there are other software which are not as expensive uh, or not costly at all, which you can also use um, to edit your sound, right? Now, let me take a step back a little bit and go back to uh, go back to that bit around content which I shared earlier right now you want to ensure as well that you have a proper script right you have to outline what you will be doing what you will be sharing so just like I did a while ago I end up going back right you don't want to have to go back back or, re or be repeating too much of what you have said, but you will need a proper script. A proper script is a guide that will help you to get through your points. And what I did this evening was do a bit of bullet points because I know, I know a little bit about the subject, right? Um, a proper script helps you to put your, organize your content in a structured way that people can easily follow and understand. Right? And that is one of the most important things uh, as well about your, your podcast that you will have to keep in mind. If you're just joining in, I uh, just want to tell you what the four main areas uh, are of, um, of the discussion this evening. They are uh, content, intent, equipment, I just touched on that, and deployment, which is basically marketing of your podcast. You need great content, but very specific content so people know exactly why they're coming to listen to your podcast, right? Intent, you need a goal in mind. What are you aiming to do? And you need proper equipment as well because that will determine how your content sounds, how your content looks. And those things matter a lot for when people are choosing to engage uh, with your content, all right? So, um, all right, now... Let's get onto the final uh, of my ment list because you realize everything is a bit of an alliteration um, with deployment. Deployment is simply marketing. How do you get people to tune in to your podcast, right? Because that's super important, getting people to listen to your podcast. So what you want to do is ensure that you have a home for your podcast. Excuse me one second, just got to take a quick sip. Thank you. Great. Now, you've got to get the word out there. 
If you use your social media platforms, that is one great way, right? But what I would also encourage everyone to do is to ensure that they have uh, that they've got a that you have a website, even a basic website like a blog, like a free blog. You can uh, visit uh, Squarespace, uh, WordPress, Wix. They can help you build websites. They've got free packages. Right, but they've also got paid packages. Obviously, the paid packages give you a lot more benefits um, uh, for your for your content, for hosting your content, and the way you are able to market them. But one of the things that you would really need to have is a home for your content. Right? We'll talk about broadcasting the the podcast in just a little while. I'll share some of the popular ones with you. But even before you get to having your podcast there, you want to be able to have people interact on a greater level with you and your business, right? Um, because again, it goes back to the intent of your podcast. If you're intending to sell products or services or market yourself or sell you know, your, your skill sets, right? You're going to need to have a permanent home somewhere online that you can direct people to, right? And ultimately at some point you can monetize that. Right. So you really want to ensure that you've got a website. Right. You need to have a website, even if it's even if it's just a basic website, you are definitely uh, going to need that. Now, once you've got that in a very simple and structured way, you share your content there. Right. But using, for example, some social media platforms, you can always broadcast the, the, the your content. So once you've uploaded your content, uh, again, I'll get into the, the different homes of podcasts uh, online. Well, podcasts all exist online, right? But I'll, get, I'll share with you some of the different platforms where you can uh, share your podcasts, right? What you want to do is to be able to send people there, uh, send people to your website as well, right? So <clears throat> when you have done your podcast, let's say you are sharing it even on YouTube. If you didn't even record the video, you can put use photos to cover your video, your audio, pardon me, right? And share that on YouTube so people can actually still sit and listen, listen through it, right? But you want to be able to share. How are you going to be able to share? You could use a number of means. You could use uh, like search engine optimization. Again, you will need a website for that so you can use your tag words, um, your tags and, 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 and um, place them in the, <clears throat> in the system so that search engines can bring you up when people are searching for a particular things. So let's go back to that example of hair, right? Treating natural or caring for natural unprocessed hair in a tropical climate. Right, people might be looking for natural hair, so you would want to ensure that on your website you are listing these things, right? So that when and your website can be crawled uh, through by the search engines, so that they can bring up your podcast, your website, um, among the the searches when people are looking for natural hair, you know, or hair in a tropical climate, or hair care, a number of keywords that you can use uh, across your blog, across your website, in your podcast, in the description of your podcast. So when people are searching, they can find you. Search engine optimization, search engine marketing, those are super deep that I cannot get into at the moment, but you would want to probably use some of those methods um, to help boost your podcast being found when people are searching for things, right? Now, I mentioned social media earlier, and that's simple, low-hanging fruit. Don't necessarily want to want to go there right now, right? Uh, or just yet. I will get there in just a moment. But those are among the means that you can use. You can also start promoting your your podcast among your friends and your family, asking them literally to tune in to share if they find the content engaging enough or useful, right? Um, but don't expect everyone to share your content. Don't expect everyone to find your content useful, which now brings me into the wide, wide world of social media promotion or social media marketing, right? You're on Facebook. You are maybe on Instagram, maybe you're on Twitter, maybe you're on Pinterest. It could be one of those or any other so social media platform. What you want to be able to do 
is to share your content, share the link. So you're, you're, you're hosting your, your podcast on Apple Podcasts or Google Podcasts, right? Or Buzzsprout or SoundCloud or any of those types of platforms, right? You want to be able to share with people. You're hosting it, but how do you get people there? If you can't get people there, it is absolutely pointless. You've got to make use of what you, the resources you have around you. Now, you're on Facebook and you've got a Facebook profile, but do you have a Facebook page, right? Now, a Facebook page is really essentially creating a business, a, a business around you or your brand, right? And if the brand is your person, then fine, right? You can create a Facebook page for that. What it allows you to do um, is to market and to promote your podcast. So you can actually spend as little as $10, $5. Obviously, the more you spend for a longer period of time, the more reach you can have, right? Um, I can't get into all the inner workings of Facebook ads um, and the algorithms that determine how you share, where you share, etc. Right? But you would want to probably use set up a set up a Facebook page, right? So that you can do better advertising. It also allows you to really pay keen attention to how effective. Uh, effectively you have marketed your podcast, right? Because you may pick an audience. Let's say, again, let's stick with the same hair care, right? Taking care of natural hair, natural unprocessed hair in a tropical climate, right? And I'm not, notice I didn't get very specific kinky hair, straight hair or not, just natural unprocessed hair in a tropical climate. Let's stick with that for a bit. You're probably going to want to uh, advertise uh, do a Facebook ad uh, that reaches ladies, let's say your targeting, target is women, targeting women aged, I don't know, 18 to 28 who live in tropical climates. So you think about that. All right, the Caribbean, you think about warm places in the United States, for example, like a Florida, like Arizona, like California, etc. Right? You want to be very, very specific. Who have expressed an interest in hair, hair care? When you when you when you uh, create these ads, you get a list that you can really fine tune the type of persons who the ad would be displayed uh, for, or displayed to, or shown to, right? Or targeted, right? And over time, uh, what you will see is how effective it, it, it really is. Now, you have to also set a goal in mind. Do you want to see an increase in the subscribers to your page? Do you want to see an increase uh, in the number of people who are engaging with your podcast? All that kind of metric. You have to think that through for yourself and determine what a picture of success looks like for you, right? Now, the beauty of Facebook ads is that Facebook owns Instagram. So even without an Instagram account, you are still able to reach people on Instagram, right? Now, in Jamaica, Facebook is the most popular uh, social media platform. It, it dwarfs uh, Instagram and Twitter in terms of numbers of users, right? So Facebook for Jamaicans especially, is a wonderful, wonderful platform um, that you would really want to make very, very good use of, right? Now, once you are doing that kind of marketing, then again, just to repeat, you are able to kind of see how people are responding, right? And you have to choose your own picture of success, but you must have your goal in mind. So all these things are tied to the goal that you have in mind with the content that you're pushing. Now, for those of you who are, that's my neighborhood, for those of you who are just joining in, I'm Garth Williams discussing Podcasting 101, all right? Podcasting really is about four main things, your content, your intent, your equipment, and your deployment, which is your marketing. And that's the last bit that I was just on. Again, 
content. You really want to be very specific about the content of your podcast. It can't be too broad, otherwise people really don't know exactly what they're listening for, right? Or watching for. It's all about your intent. What is your goal? right? So through this bit of content, what do you want to happen? You want people to subscribe to your channel, subscribe to your service, purchase your products, build a community, start conversations, change things in society. You determine what that goal is, but you have to be driven by that goal. The next thing is equipment. You don't have to break the bank when it comes to equipment. Simple things, a condenser microphone, if you've got a good enough smart device or computer or laptop with at least a, with a, with a, with a, um, with space to record, etc. That's good enough for now, right? You will need editing software. There are some audio software that are available for free online. There are others like Adobe Audition that you can purchase. Um, and th those are a little more sophisticated than the free ones, which will allow you to ensure that your content sounds really good uh, going out. But the most, Im well, I wouldn't say the most important thing, but another key thing is your deployment or marketing. How do you share, right? I made mention of a couple of, of platforms. You can look up a few more for yourself uh, to discover some other platforms that you, you'd want to use to share. Just want to share another quick thing with you about the history of podcasts, right? Where are podcasts coming from? Where did it originally uh, come from? Well, um, podcasting was developed in 2004 uh, by a former MTV video jockey called Adam Curry and a software developer called Dave Weiner. Now, w Curry wrote a program called iPodder uh, that enabled him to automatically download internet radio broadcasts to his iPod, right? And lots of other developers have come online uh, since then to improve on the idea, and then podcasting was officially born, right? So, it so the pod, iPod, that's really where it's really coming from uh, with David Weiner and Adam Curry. Um, trying to get radio, internet radio broadcasts to be downloaded onto their, onto their iPods. Hi, Diana Sharp. I see you. Nisha Kovali, good evening to you as well. Thank you so much for, for tuning in, right? So that's a little uh, bit of a historical note for you uh, to, 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 to just kind of bear in mind where it's coming from. Obviously, it has evolved quite a bit to where we are now, rather robust, right? Now, one of the other things I want to mention um, about podcasts is consistency, right? You need to be consistent. If you are not, if you can't produce a podcast every Monday or every Thursday, right, then don't. If you can only do every other Thursday, then you make sure that you do that, right? Now, one thing I would recommend if what you should do is record your entire series, right? So if you know that your content is going to be broken down, say, into 20, 30-minute episodes, right? Then record at least 10 of those episodes before you release even the first one. Ensure that you have recorded, that you have edited all your content or most of your content before you go forward, right? Because once you roll out, people are going to be depending on you. The minute you prove to be inconsistent, they will move on. Or even if they don't move on, they won't be so inclined to be tuning in to your content, right? You also should record your content in banks, uh, like I mentioned just now, so that you are able to provide a certain level of continuity, right? So one episode leads into the next, leads into the next, leads into the next, and so on, right? Now, it shouldn't be, but it also should be that if you listen to one episode and you didn't catch the previous, the previous others, right, that you are completely lost. No, try and structure your episodes so that you can manage one area or one topic or maybe two at a time. So someone can still learn listening to an isolated episode without having necessarily been able to benefit from the previous ones. And what you should do as well is to refer to previous podcasts or previous episodes, right? So you're going down the progression, right, of taking care of hair 
uh, natural unprocessed hair in a tropical climate. You want to be able to go through, okay, how do you wash your hair? How do you moisturize it? How do you comb it? How do you brush it? Etc. 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 You're going through all those things. Don't tackle everything in one episode. Go through bit by bit, but also make reference to previous episodes, right? But again, the consistency is what is important. If you're doing this thing every other Monday or every Friday or whatever you choose as your frequency for sharing your podcasts, you must stick to it so that people can find you being dependable, right? Also, think about how you're sharing your content from the angle that, is it something that I can share a, tell in a story type way is it something so you because you don't want your podcast to sound all lecturing right um in a way kind of like what i'm doing now right but but i'm all about interaction so if you've got questions or comments then please i encourage you um to to share uh with us someone says nisha says she's echoing and can't fix it uh Nisha, maybe your mic is on, so what you could probably do is mute your microphone um, microphone function to see uh, if all you're getting is just the audio. If you have a headset as well, plug in the headset into the device that you're using to stream, um, and that should cancel uh, any kind of echoing, right? Um, now, I was saying uh, about the storytelling right because what you really want to do is to be engaging so that the content is something that people will sit and listen to and go mm, okay i've learned something here this is pretty good stuff right uh i see casey signed on hi casey thank you so much for for tuning in uh, really happy to, to to have you here i plugged uh the storyteller earlier uh, i will do so when i'm closing right but you want to be able to deliver your content in a way that engages people right and what you should do there's a bit of research which has to go into it right um bounce it off your friends bounce it off your family bounce it off strangers right find out if people would be interested in hearing this type of content and why they would be interested in hearing this type of content as well be prepared for people to say no that's okay. What a no provides you with is an opportunity to think again, right? To maybe adjust your, your approach. Or maybe it could just be a case that, you know, this type of content may not necessarily be podcast worthy. Maybe a blog would be a better idea. Maybe it would be better if I were to do a series of short videos right so give that some thought um when you are when you are determining the type of content uh that you are that you are sharing right so be prepared folks to hear a no but again a no sends you to the drawing board and also means that you are better able to structure what you need to share uh with others right now now um I think uh, Diana was saying something about the microphone. Okay, so um, looking at the positioning of your microphone, think about the room. It may need a carpet to absorb some of the noise, sound reducing cloth to reduce noise, friction from outside, a microphone sponge cover, etc. I Right, it's called a buffer um, or a baffler, um, a microphone shield and other simple things. Um, and yes, that's really good stuff. Thank you so much for sharing, Diana. Um, you've got to do a little bit of reading around it, right? Some of the equipment that you will, that you will need. But usually, when you're making uh, purchases of like condenser microphones, which are the best ones, the most ideal uh, for doing your podcasts, usually, um, especially if you're buying it online, or if you're going to a store, any sales rep worth his or her salt will say to you, okay, so you're interested in a microphone, maybe you'd want to consider getting a baffler, right? So that you can reduce the popping sound um, when you're pronouncing your P's and your D's, right? Um, they will also want to probably recommend uh, a Lavelle, uh, we call it a lav mic, a lavalier mic, right? Um, that comes with a clip so that you can clip on and clip off. And let me just clip mine back on right there <laughs> right um but you will have certain types of equipment that uh, will come uh, along with 
uh, when you make come come along when you're making those types of purchases, right? Um, but again, just to remind you of that last point, you need to ensure that it is worth using a podcast to tell that particular story or to deliver on the particular goal uh, that you have in mind, right? Uh, building your audience. Um, again, I mentioned reaching out to people that you know. Also, what helps? If you can do your podcast with someone else, right? The someone else may be an occasional guest or a guest every time. If you are able to do that, that's great because then you can have conversations and people can listen in to conversations. People like hearing conversations rather than one person speaking from 6.34 this evening uh, to 11 minutes past 7. You know what I mean, right? Um, but if you can have conversations going, that's great because people like hearing conversations when you have just one voice delivering all the content it can get uh, a little bit monotonous i'd like to say good evening to shelly crooks lazarus who's just tuning in thank you so much uh shelly right um but yeah now you want to go with having a guest or having a co-host if you can get a co-host, that's great. Two different people, two different minds. They may see the world differently. They may have varying views or they may have similar views, but share them in different ways. It adds a certain amount of dynamism. If you can get that, then that, that is also great. But going it alone, there's nothing wrong with that. Also, if you can make your content interactive, that's really great too. And I realized that Diana was actually talking to, to Nisha when Nisha had made mention of the, the problem that she was having. All right, it's all good. So, all right, now I want to say something about video. Once you're doing video, um, try not to be distracted, particularly if you're using the camera on the front of your, let's say you're using your cell phone, right? There's always a distraction because your face is right down here, right? Now you notice sometimes when people are doing uh, lives or just doing a recording, sometimes you can tell when they're using the camera on the, um, on the front of the phone that their eyes are here. Because rather than looking here directly into the camera and talking to the audience, because the camera at the on, the, on the screen is your window to the audience. It is how we get to connect with you. Right, But when you end up talking down here, like now when I'm looking uh, at the comments on screen, right, hi Rosie Thames, um, then you lose the opportunity to really connect with your audience. I see where Casey is asking about how do you get sponsorship. I'll get to that in just a moment, Casey, right? Um, but you've got to engage with people up here. Look into the lens. Speak to your audience, right? And also give them opportunities to engage with you. If it's not a live event where you can actually speak with someone else and hear them saying other things to you, then pay attention to your comment section. Sure, that's always good. But also uh, give them an opportunity to send an email, right? So for me, if you want to send me an email, it's garthowilliams at gmail.com. G-A-R-T-H-O-W-I-L-L-I-A-M-S at gmail.com. There, you can say something. You can reach out to me. Did you think I was engaging? Did you think I was exciting? Or did this podcast, this broadcast really suck? You can let me know, right? But you have to give your audience an opportunity to interact with you, right? Um, also, what you can do is live tweet, uh, or yeah, you can live tweet if you are using, if you're particularly if you're on Twitter, right? Um, the day you are premiering your, your 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 podcast, right? You can set it up as an event. You can also do the same thing uh, on Facebook. If it's a video, you can set it up as an event, like a live watch party, right? So the content is being played. You don't have to worry about recording it because you've done that already, and then you can have the conversation with people who are listening or watching for the first time they may have questions they may share ideas you are able in that moment uh, to share a response with them 
right, from anywhere in the world, you can definitely do that. So that gives you a great opportunity uh, for engagement. But one of the most important things is to have fun. You've got to enjoy your podcast. If you're, uh, if you're not enjoying it, it will come across in your tone. And once that comes across in your tone, then you can just imagine that your audience will be turned off. All right, let's talk about how do you get sponsorship? That's a good question coming uh, from Casey. All right, Casey and others, uh, getting sponsorship is not ever a straightforward matter, right? Which is why I mentioned the marketing uh, and how you set up yourself online um, to ensure that you can engage uh, with your audience, that there is a space to which they can go to get more information. To get sponsorship, you will have to prepare a proposal, right? And your proposal are, is to have a certain number of key elements in it, right? Among those elements are the content. What is your podcast about and a rationale? Why are you choosing to do this podcast? You've got to defend the method by which you are delivering this level of content. Why do you believe it is going to be engaging? In all of that, you have to also identify a target market. Who or to whom are you podcasting or sharing this podcast? Are you targeting, let's stick with the same here example, women aged 18 to 28 who live in tropical climates, right? Is it tropical climates only in the Western hemisphere? Or are you also targeting uh, women who live in tropical climates in the East, right? Um, where are your target or where is your target? Who is your target? You've got to be very specific. Why as well should that brand or those brands, right, partner with you to reach those people to reach your particular target. You've got to say these things. Numbers are also important. How many people do you think you'll reach with your podcast and why? Right? And a lot of that can be answered with how you plan to promote your podcast. So I would have mentioned Facebook ads, right? You can, I would have mentioned uh, social uh, and other social media platforms uh, as part of it, right? You can develop a full digital marketing uh, campaign around your podcast. And that uh, has to be summarized in your proposal. So when a brand manager or the type of um, uh, personnel in a business who makes the decisions around sponsorship, when they take a look at it, they can go, hmm, I like the concept, I like the target, I like how they will do their marketing, and also your proposal must include the opportunities for their brand to grow, right? You must see or point out how your podcast will help their brand to grow. That is super, super important, all right? Um, so those are some of the key things that are in a strong proposal, right? Um, the executive summary in your proposal really is an overall summary that encapsulates concept, target, marketing, numbers, promotion, etc. in one page, right? So that someone to whom you've written your proposal or addressed your proposal can easily go, okay, this is what it is in a nutshell, and then you can direct them. Use your, use your, uh, your executive summary to direct them to different parts of your proposal which break down specific numbers. So if your proposal, for example, has 10 pages, right? And don't try and cram everything onto one page, right? If your proposal has 10 pages, right? Then what you can do in your executive summary is say, uh, a breakdown of the target is available on page five, for argument's sake. So you mention, yeah, women age 10 to whatever, age 18 to 28, but on page 10, you get a, a further breakdown, right? Include a table of contents. So you can quickly look at it and go, all right, this is here, this is here, that is here, right? Um, and if your proposal is electronic, ensure that your proposal, it's a little warm in my office. Um, I usually have the windows open and stuff, right? Um, but ensure as well that you add clickable elements in it and not necessarily clickable elements that will take you to a website. That's fine too, right? Because hopefully you would have 
created your website and had some kind of online presence for your podcast um, online already so that you can always direct them there. But also allow people to be able to click through your proposal. There's a way to hyperlink pages, um, which is very straightforward really, um, in your podcast, right? Um, in your proposal, pardon me. So if you're using something like uh, Word or you're using, or any micro, Microsoft um, Office um, uh, application, right? So let's use a Word or Publisher or um, um, PowerPoint, right? To create your, your proposal, you can actually hyperlink pages. So you just highlight it, right click it, you see the option to hyperlink, and then you can choose from the dialog box which opens which section of the document you want to hyperlink to. Right? So you can do all those cool little things. Um, there's also a software called, an online application called Quiller, Q-W-I-L-R, which is a completely digital proposal um, platform. And when you send your proposal, uh, you, get, you, you can get a notification to say that the recipient has, one, received it, two, opened it, three, browsed it, and four, seen exactly where in the proposal they have browsed, right? What that allows you to do then is to follow up and say, hi, I saw where you received it. I noticed that you opened it. You looked at such and such a page, but you didn't pay attention to this page. It has some critical information that can help you to make your decision. I would recommend that you give it a look, right? But I'm getting into some other matters now around sponsorship, right? But again, you get sponsorship or you give yourself a chance at sponsorship by creating a strong proposal. And a strong proposal is re research-based, numbers-driven, very clear, and easy to read, but also succinct. You don't want to bore people. Let me see if there are any other... All right. Uh, another question is, what kind of podcast do you think Jamaicans want to listen to? That's a very difficult question to answer. Um, and I'll tell you why. Because Jamaicans are interested in a wide variety of things. We have a very diverse society. Um, there are a couple of podcasts I wanted to bring up, actually. Um, there is Talk Truth with Mario Evan. There is Reasonings with Odessa. And there is another one called The Drive Phase, right? Um, Talk Truth with Mario Evan. Mario Evan is a medical doctor and also an entertainer. He's a singer, right? And he delves into a wide variety of societal matters, music and entertainment as well, with a wide cross-section of Jamaicans. Some are singers, some are his fellow peers, uh, some are just average Jamaicans, well, not so much average Jamaicans, but people who, who are, pardon me, a little bit uh, more on the popular side, right? Um, and those discussions are very, very interesting. I like them, right? He sings a lot. It's a lot of fun. It's really easy listening. And you get a real chance to enjoy Mario, his guests, and what they're sharing, right? There is Reasonings with Odessa. And Odessa tackles also a wide variety of issues. Sometimes it's a bit of social commentary. It's a lot of entertainment. Um, and it's not just Jamaican entertainment. It's international entertainment. So she has international guests, uh, people with international reach. She has local guests, popular people, others not so well known, but real leaders and uh, thought leaders in their own right, in their own uh, specific career paths and so on. Um, she uses music in her podcast and it's very good informative listening. Then for sports, uh, a good friend of mine from university, his name is Dalton Myers. He's a very strong sports administrator, having worked with the University of the West Indies and a few other, uh, the Jamaica Olympic Association, etc., Jamaica Cricket Association. His podcast is called The Drive Phase. And The Drive Phase is really that part of sprinting where the athlete is not looking at anyone. Their head is down and they're powering up to get into their gait and have that push to complete their race, right? The Drive Phase is a sports podcast where they discuss a wide variety of sporting issues with a wide variety of sporting stakeholders. So it's sponsors, it's coaches, it's athletes, it's fans, it's, it's clubs, it's, it's organizations, a wide variety of sporting content delivered in that one podcast. So to answer your question, Casey, Jamaicans are interested in a wide variety of things. 
Again, delivering or developing a podcast is all about the content that you want to share. And the thing is, don't think only of Jamaica. If you're a Jamaican, don't think only of Jamaica when determining uh, or developing a podcast idea. No, think global. Remember, the internet is global. Jamaica only has two, what, about 3 million people, just shy of 3 million people, right? But the world has 7 billion. Mark you, 7 billion people don't have internet access. Neither do all the 3 million in Jamaica, right? But think globally. A lot of people can benefit from that. Brand Jamaica can be leveraged because people love Jamaica. We've delivered a lot to the world and we still have a lot more to deliver, right? So think about that when you are going uh, about your podcast development, but research quite a bit. What you really want to do is listen to some Jamaican podcasts or podcasts by Jamaicans, right? Think about listening to some global podcasts uh, as well that can help inform your style and your approach uh, when you are doing yours, all right? Um, I've said enough. I really wanted to not be so lengthy. Um, some people say I'm chatting off, and I have given truth to their opinion this evening, credence to their opinion, right? Um, but thank you so much. If you've got any other questions um, or comments, I will be more than happy uh, to, to respond to those. Um, so the floor is really open. Um, just want to kind of re, just to go, go over a few of the points I had made earlier, right? It's four main things that you've got to consider. Content, intent, equipment, and deployment, which um, is your marketing, right? Good content is really specific so that you can deliver something that people want to hear. Goal, your intent is important. What do you intend to do that has to drive the way you deliver? The equipment, you don't need to break the bank, but you need to be able for people to hear you clearly, right? That's really important. Your deployment, which is your marketing, you've got to be robust with that. Um, so make sure that you give full consideration to a nice, robust digital marketing campaign. You can reach out to groups like Storyteller um, if you need help with preparing a full digital campaign uh, for your podcast. It will also help to inform how you create that strong, uh, engaging, epic proposal for sponsorship because you're going to need some money um, to help get the word out right? Um, be consistent. You definitely need to be consistent. If you can't deliver it every Monday, don't deliver it every Monday. Go for a period that will allow you to remain consistent. But the most important thing with that is recording and having a number of episodes. I say at least 10 in the bank before you do road. So at least once you start, you can maintain your podcast right? And remember, it's a series. You don't have to do it 52 weeks a year. You could probably go for 20, take a break, come back with another 20, but in the break, find a way to engage people, all right? Um, and I think that's a wrap. Uh, Diana says, I could keep going. Uh, she enjoyed listening to me. Uh, Misha is having a laugh. Thank you very much, Diana. I really, really um, appreciate that. As I close, uh, just to remind you, of course, um, that the Storyteller and the Love Not Nikes uh, Network, you can, you can become a member. But most importantly, they have a series of videos that they'll be releasing on YouTube, all right, about pitching to get sponsorship, basics of live blogging, personal branding, taking great photos, and how to start your own podcast. That's my own, all right? So be on the lookout for those. Um, again, thanks to Jamaicans.com, Xavier Murphy, and the entire team uh, for allowing me to use this platform uh, to share this knowledge uh, with you all. Um, God bless you. Take care. Stay safe, most of all, during this pandemic. Um, wherever you are, take care of yourself and each other. Peace.